Hi there, and today we're modifying the Lego City Fire Station. This set came out at the beginning of this year, so the 1st of January 22, and it's got some really nice little features. First of all, I like that they've used the new double doors that were introduced this year, so you get better access into the ground floor. The ground floor doesn't have much inside, just this control panel with a chair for a minifigure to sit at, and of course, a coffee cup. Moving up to the first floor, we've got another control station, and here they're using the minifig game controller and what looks like a screen with a plan of LEGO City. And then moving up to the top floor, we've got another control desk with what looks like some sort of radar. I've always loved LEGO's roller doors they do for city sets, and this one has got a huge double height one to house the huge fire engine. The truck itself looks absolutely great. I think it's one of the best trucks we've had for quite a few years now. And of course it's using this new bright yellow color that was introduced this year into the emergency themes. But it does have my first negative point for the set. It's got this huge shooter on top of it, which does this, which is a great play feature, but it's just not for me. And it's something that we'll be modifying later. And of course, as it's a city set, it has to have the obligatory helicopter. So it's got this nice bright yellow H on the top and the helicopter sits nicely on top of it like so. The helicopter is quite a cute little build, unusual that it only has two rotors, mostly they put three on these type of helicopters. It's got a nice little opening canopy on the front and of course two splat shooters on the sides. Fortunately the firefighters don't have to travel far when there's an emergency as just over the road opposite of the fire station there's a cat stuck up a tree. And right next door to that, there seems to be some sort of recycling centre, which has coincidentally caught on fire. The main play feature that I'm not particularly keen on is that we have a large doorway here on the first floor and some kind of platform which you can put a minifigure on and as it turns around, it drops down to the bottom. It works well, but just looks a bit clunky. And so onto the modifications. And first, we're going to work on the fire truck. The truck really does look great, especially the black hubs on the wheels and the use of the new yellow, but the uh, big chute on the top really does just look a bit clunky. So what I'm gonna do is just take that off and fill in the gap with the parts we've already got. So pull that off and inside we've got this hinge system where you can raise and lower the shooter. And if you take those two plates off there, along with its pin, and we'll take the slope off the back, replace those two, put it back on top where it came from, like that. And then if we take the 2x6 tile off the top of the shooter, it happily fills the gap we've got there. And then we've got a really nice chunky looking fire truck but onto the modifications of the building. And I really absolutely love the look they've achieved with these inverted slopes on the uh, garage side of the building. They've done a similar thing on this year's police station too. However, this side um, doesn't quite make as much sense to me. I think we've got three levels, all with a different kind of control station on them. It would be better if some of those were grouped together and we had a bit more space for the firemen to hang out when they're not on duty. So I'm going to leave the garage side as it is, but take the top two floors off this and work from the ground up. So I'm going to extend the width of this side of the building by eight studs. And to start that, I need eight studs of base plate to go on here. And that's just a six by eight and a four by eight. And what I'm going to do is move all this stuff over eight studs. Then using the same window panel that they're using upstairs, we're gonna fill in this gap. So first of all, a one by one just over here, and then a one by eight in front of it all, and that'll hold those two sets of base plates together. And then our large window panel for downstairs. Then we're gonna put a one by one brick, which is five bricks tall this side, and then a similar one by two, five bricks tall on the other side, then we can add in back that slope. Then we add a red one by eight on top of that, and we've already doubled the width. 
Now from the back, we're not looking very structurally sound with this beam just hanging in midair. So we're gonna take that off and remove all the interior furniture. Now we've got space over here. This is rather blocking the way through anyway. So take off the chair and the coffee cup. And what we're gonna do is take the base off this monitor and add a one by two on the front of it and relocate it where his coffee cup was just there. And then his chair can be put back in front of it like so. But he does obviously still need somewhere to put his coffee cup. And putting it on top of his monitor, that's a health and safety nightmare in its own right. So we're going to get a 1x2 brick here and add a jumper in grey and a 1x1 tile on top of that and a 1x1 brick. We've made a little tiny bit of desk which can sit the other side of his chair. And he's now got somewhere still to put his well earned cup of coffee. And then to support that beam that was just dangling in space, we've got another five brick tool, one by two, and a one by two to go on the bottom of it. And that can go here with our beam there, and then a new one by eight on the other side. And our first floor is complete. So up here, the original model was using two four by six plates. And what we're gonna do is leave one of those where it was, but move the other one slightly over and add in a new eight by six, and that'll keep the ground floor together a little better, and then put our four by six on the end, and then replace that triangle piece with the bit of balustrade back on the end there. The front wall of this floor goes straight back on here, and I've bought the pieces to build an identical frame next door to it. So we have a pillar, three gray inverted slopes go next door to it. One, two, three a pillar at the end, and then of course the window in the middle. And then to finish off, a 1x6 white tile in, in the front. And then another 1x8 red brick on top. Now what I didn't show you earlier is that end wall with the blue studs on the side brick also acts as a ladder from the top floor down to the helicopter pad. So what we need to do is take those parts off, replace that blue 1x4 with a standard white one by four put those in then we're going to replace that step ladder and slope which join the tower to the helicopter pad and put in those two tan bricks back beside them so moving the parts from the other end of the building we had a red pillar and a white door frame However, it slightly annoyed me it was just a door frame. So what I've done, I've put a light trans blue door and we're gonna add that into the door frame. So I've got an opening door at the end of the building. Then round the back, we're gonna replace that red pillar on this side, add two in the middle, and then extend our red line, which goes all the way around the top of the first floor. As we're going to move the control station from the middle floor up to the top floor, as I said, we need somewhere for the farmer to relax on the middle floor. So what we're going to do is make two small beds for them to chill out on. And we're just using a two by six tan plate with some one by twos underneath. And then we're going to add a one by two on the end with one of these curved slopes, which has got a little, makes a little pillow on the end. And then a two by two tile and a two by two tile with the two studs on modified so their legs can click onto there and they can recline on their bed. We've made two of those to go in the middle floor. So they're gonna go one on this side and one on the other side. So the firemen are ready to jump into action. And then we're on to the last floor up at the top. So as with the other floors, we're just gonna take what we had and we're gonna double it up and extend it sideways. So first we're gonna add the floor back in and again using those two four by sixes, but we're gonna put them at opposite ends to give it a little bit more stability with our six by eight in the middle. And then of course a pillar at the back and we have our open doorway here. So the farmer can climb out down the step ladder to the helicopter. And then our wall from the top floor just goes straight there. And then, like I said, we're gonna double that up and make a duplicate next door to it.
Now on the original model, these inverted slopes here were used to have these sort of floodlights added. So if I put that one back on there and this one back on there, obviously we want to duplicate that. So I've got myself another one. However, putting it right next door looks a little bit too over the top. So I thought if we put this one at this end and move the original one over a stud, then we've got three evenly spaced across the top of the building. And then we just need to fill in the gaps with red. Then upstairs is obviously now going to be our main control centre, so we're going to replace that station that was on this side, just there. And we're going to take the one from downstairs, we're going to move that control pad around 90 degrees, like that, and pop it just there, with its chair from downstairs too. And then as we're limited on wall space up here, we're going to mount the city map in between the two stations. So I'm going to take a 1x2 click hinge in light grey and I'm going to add two 1x2 plates to the bottom of it. Then I'm going to get the other half of the click hinge in black, like that. And we're going to mount the map on the front of that. And that can sit happily between the two stations. Now both workers can see the map between them. And then it's just replacing the original window at the end and then more pillars along the back. and two 1x8s again to join it all together. And I just realized I completely forgot to add the support for the pole on the middle floor. So as if by magic, there's the support reinstated and we can click the pole back onto it. And then just like everything else, the roof has to be extended by eight studs sideways too. The only thing is that this red tile now has to also move across one to marry up with the floodlight below. So again, I'm splitting up the two 4x6s and I'm putting one on this end, which has that tile already to cover up the floodlight, and the other one on the other end, which has its two antenna on it. I'm filling the gap with a 6x8. Then we're going to replace that sign with its 2x4 tile in front of it. Put the other one back on the floodlight at the other end. And of course, one on the new middle floodlight and just fill in the gaps with a two by four there, one by four behind it, and then two one by threes next to the middle. And the roof's complete as well. And then finally, a quick unplanned modification. I just had a look at this and thought this yellow line now looks a little bit odd that it uh, finishes over there. It used to come right up to the grey in front of the doors. So what I'm going to do is just quickly chuck two 1x4 black plates on it to match this one and two 1x4 yellow tiles on top. And then that just makes it look a little bit neater. To finish it off properly, I'm actually going to also replace this 8x16 road plate next to the 16x16 16 16 one with another larger one. And now we've got road across the full width of the fire station. And so here we have our double wide extended fire station. I think it looks a lot more impressive than the original. And also it's very handy that this is now 32 studs wide. And that makes it really easy for fitting into a city with modular buildings and other things, which are quite often planned around a 32 by 32 base plate system. Let me know what you think of this modification down in the comments below. If you've liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And of course, please do subscribe for more LEGO videos.